Hi everybody, in this video we're going to do some derivatives of f inverse functions and show you some examples of how they work. Um, remember that our formula for the derivative, so if we have f inverse of a, then when you take the derivative, so f inverse a prime is equal to 1 over or the reciprocal of f prime of f inverse of a, uh, and then the alternate form that we had in the other video was f prime of k, where here this f inverse of a is the y value on the inverse function, which meant that the k is the x value on the original function f. So let's do some examples to see how this plays out. Alright, example one is to find the slope of the tangent line at the point 2 comma 3 on the graph of f inverse given that f of x, the original function, is equal to x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 22. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. The first cow that we're looking for here is the fact that we are talking about this, the graph of f inverse. That's going to be a clue that we're going to use this formula, this weird inverse formula. And you should note which graph this point is on. Because it says 2 comma 3 on the graph of f prime, this means that 2 comma 3 is equal to a comma k on f inverse, which means that the point 3 comma 2, x and y switch, which is k comma a, is on the original graph of f. We should also point out that if you attempted to find the inverse by making this x and plugging in y's for these x's here and then trying to solve for y, you wouldn't be able to do it at all because these uh, this is a cubic expression and we don't have a nice way of solving um, that cubic expression using methods that we're going to talk about in this class or pretty much anywhere without very heavy computers. So to put this into the context of the formula, we are trying to find f inverse of 2 prime because this 2 is the x value on the inverse. And to do that, we're actually going to pretty much always use the, the second version of this. We're going to do this because we need to find the number to plug into f prime. So when we look at this, we're going to be like, okay, this is the reciprocal of f prime of k because here we have k, the x value on the original f, and that means that k here is the x value on the original f, it's 3. And where did we get that 3 from? The 3 was the y value of the inverse. So this pretty much just boils down to 1 over f prime of 3, which means what we're going to do is find f prime, plug in 3, and take 3 reciprocal. So, if f of x is x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 22, then f prime is the power rule, 3x squared minus 2x plus 2. We're going to evaluate this at x equals 3 to get 3 times 3 squared, which is 27, minus 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2, and that's going to give us a total of 23. And then when we plug this into the answer, we will have 1 over 23, the reciprocal. All right. Uh, and this makes sense on a graph. If you have a slope here of 23, which is very steep, then the reciprocal slope, if you take this line and reflect it over y equals x, is going to be very, very not steep, still positive. Technically, they would intersect um, at there, like that. So this would be a slope of 23. This would be a slope of 1 23rd, the reciprocals of each other. Cool. New problem. Example 2. And this one's a little bit harder. Uh, let's say that we have f of x equals x squared plus x, and we know that h is the inverse of f. Find h prime of 2. 
So because h is the inverse, this is the same as asking f inverse prime of 2. And so we're going to do, okay, what, this is going to be 1 over f prime of the k value. So remember that because we're plugging in 2 into f inverse, that means that 2 is the x value on f inverse. So the y value on f inverse is k, and then that means on f they switch. So we have k comma 2. This is what we're going to use to determine what k is. So we're going to take the equation for f of x. f of x equals x squared plus x. And we're going to set f equal to 2 because this 2 is the y value on f. So 2 equals k squared plus k. When x equals k, the y value is 2. So I plug in 2 for the y value and k for the x value. And we're going to solve for k. Now, almost all the time, you can solve this simply by looking at it and sort of guessing and checking numbers. So I would guess 0 first, but 0 squared plus 0 is not equal to 2. Then I would guess 1. Oh, look, 1 squared plus 1, that's equal to 2. Great. That means that k is 1. Um, sometimes you will be able to solve this by normal means. So if you subtracted 2 to the other side and then did stuff like factoring, you could determine this. But guessing and checking is going to be by far the best way to do that. Um, cool. So k is 1. Then we come back up here to our formula, and we're like, oh, cool, we need to find uh, 1 over f prime of k. So first we're going to find f prime. So the derivative of x squared plus x is 2x plus 1. We're going to plug in k equals 1, or x equals 1, um, and that's going to give us 1 over 3. Not too bad. New problem. Example 3. Back to blue. Uh, so here we have f of x equals 4 over x plus 2. Um, g is the inverse of f, and we want to find g prime of 10. Um, so again, I would recommend that you rewrite this as f inverse of 10. We're going to use the formula here. So f inverse of 10 prime equals 1 over f prime of k. All right, let's figure out what a and k are. So on the inverse, we have 10, which is the x value on the inverse, comma k, which means that on f, we have k, comma 10. That means that I'm going to take 10, set it equal to our original function, which was 4 over x plus 2. Here you can guess and check if you want to, but because x only appears in one spot, this one actually is solvable pretty nicely. Subtract 2 to both sides. 8 equals 4 over x. Multiply x to the other side. 8x equals 4. Solve by dividing by 8. 4 over 8 is 1 half. Therefore, k, or x, whichever you prefer, is 1 half. This is what we're going to plug into the derivative of f. So, um, oh, look at that, we got a little quotient here, but I can rewrite it as 4x to the negative 1. And the derivative of 4x to the negative 1 is negative 4x to the negative 2. Notice that this 2 goes away because it's a constant on its own. So I have 1 over negative 4x to the negative 2. This negative exponent does move up to the top, so this can be rewritten as x squared over, and a negative, negative x squared over 4. When we plug in 1 half, we will get negative 1 half quantity squared all over 4, which is the same as negative 1 fourth over 4. And if I take a fourth and divide it into four pieces, I get negative 1 over 16. All right, last example um, is a bit of a word problem. So if, this is example 4, 4 comma 5 is a point on the original function y equals f of x, and f prime of 4 equals 2, what can we conclude about f inverse? Um, and so really what we're going to try to do is to apply the formula kind of in reverse, but not really. Um, so if we do that and we say, oh, look, I, I have k because I have the x value on f. So if I start there and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I have 1 over f prime of 4. Let's actually do our little organization here. So f on f inverse, I'm like, question mark, question mark. But I know that on f, oh, what was the point on f? It was it was 4 comma 5. I can put that here, 4 comma 5. That means on f inverse, they switch. 
And so I know that if I take k and plug it into f prime, I am therefore finding f inverse prime of 5. So I can say that f inverse of 5, quantity prime, is equal to the reciprocal of 1 over f prime of 4. 4 is the x value on f and on f prime. Uh, so I would just take the reciprocal of this number, 2, and so I can conclude that f inverse prime of 5 is 2, the reciprocal of f prime of 4.